Nanotechnology was first predicted by Feynman in a famous speech he delivered at Caltech in 1959. It was called, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. But it wasn't until 1981, when the scanning tunneling microscope was invented, that nanotechnology became a reality. Today, nanotechnology is one of the most highly researched scientific fields, and it holds enormous potential in many areas. The official definition of nanotechnology is the manipulation of matter with at least one dimension on the scale of 1 to 100 nanometers. Just to be clear, this is not nanorobotics, that's a story for another time. In 1981, the scanning tunneling microscope was used to image an atom for the first time using a quantum mechanical effect called tunneling. And later, in 1989, IBM scientists discovered how to manipulate single atoms with a scanning tunneling microscope. They managed to move single xenon atoms on a nickel surface, making the smallest logo in the world, using only 35 atoms. Nanotechnology has allowed us to create new materials, such as carbon nanotubes and buckyballs, which are both fullerenes. Nanoparticles such as quantum dots have also been developed. These nanomaterials are often better than traditional materials since they not only have a lighter weight, but also have a higher strength and durability. Carbon nanotubes, for example, are six times lighter and a hundred times stronger than steel. With this technology, we will be able to greatly improve the efficiency of energy absorbing and storing products. Nanomaterials will enable environmentally friendly batteries with higher contents, or supercapacitors with higher rates of charging. Nanorods, nanoparticles, and nanowires have been used to improve the collection of charge in solar cells, and to drastically downsize the cells, making them more efficient. New catalysts consisting of carbon and noble metal nanoparticles created by nanotechnology will greatly improve the efficiency of hydrogen-powered fuel cells, overall lowering the dependence on fossil fuels. Nanotechnology will even bring us a world with complete manufacturing efficiency. Everything will be built out of individual atoms by nanofactories, and excess material will no longer be wasted. And that's not the only way nanotechnology is improving the environment. Nanotechnology is also remediating the environment, that is, removing contaminants. Two examples of this are improving water filtration by using nanofiltration membranes, and reducing air pollution, which is done in many ways. One main method is to use nanomembranes, similar to those being used for water filtration, and another is to create catalysts that convert unwanted molecules such as greenhouse gases into harmless or useful molecules. Scientists at UCLA have also created carbon dioxide absorbing nanocrystals, and these are only a few examples. Nanotechnology will allow us to create smart drugs that are catered to each specific person and their illness without producing the side effects of current medications. The personalization of smart drugs means they are also much more effective and efficient than regular drugs. Right now, research in this field is focused towards bone repair, tissue regeneration, and cures for terminal diseases. Even cancer could be cured using this technology. One possibility is in nanovectors, which are man-made carriers used to help the transport of cancer-killing drugs directly to the cancer site in patients. There is a large number of possible nanomaterials that can be used as nanovectors, including fullerenes, but this is a topic too broad for this video. However, there is one disadvantage. With the advent and widespread use of nanotechnology, many jobs will be lost. This ranges from traditional farming, to the manufacturing industry, and even to insurance companies. Nanotechnology is being used to create smaller, more powerful, and more efficient computers at cheaper and cheaper prices. This means that it is easy to replace what the industry will sadly view as inefficient, mistake-making, and salary-dependent humans with computers. It's great to discuss the global and scientific improvements of nanotechnology, but what about the everyday consumer side of things? Well, I've already talked about smart drugs, but there are many recent breakthroughs in consumer medication and prevention. One example is VivaGel, an antiviral gel that is made from millions of nanomolecules and kills 99.9% .9 of HIV, genital herpes, and human papillomavirus when used to coat a condom. But there are also many non-medical consumer uses of nanotechnology. I've linked a website in the description that shows over 1,800 products that use nanotechnology. It must be kept in mind that nanotechnology is still in its infancy. Most of its branches have barely begun to be explored, but nonetheless, it has already begun not only to influence, but completely change the world we live in. And progress isn't slowing either. In fact, this field is expanding at an exponential rate with countless possibilities. This video has only covered a minuscule part of the range of opportunities that nanotechnology is giving us. If you're interested in finding out more, check out the resources in the description below. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Visit me on Facebook and Google+, and click on the on-screen annotations or the links in the description down below to check out my previous videos.